On this day in 1973, Harry Hood scored a hat-trick against Rangers to send Celtic through to a 10th consecutive League Cup final. Scottish football seemed to be at a low ebb in 1973, with falling attendances a great cause for concern and the country gripped in an energy crisis caused by an industrial dispute between the government and the miners' union that would eventually result in the imposition of a three-day working week in the new year. Celtic were experiencing strike action of their own, with Davy Hay downing tools over an unsatisfactory contract offer and George Connolly walking out in solidarity with him. An uneasy truce had been called and both were back in the fold, but for the semi-final at Hamden, only Hay was selected. Ian Archer wrote in the Glasgow Herald on the morning of the game, Jock Steen today calls all his staff to Parkhead before naming a team. He has Hay, Connolly, Lennox and Deans at his disposal, all of whom did not play in far-flung Angus. He will, I suspect, recall Hay, for his physical presence in the midfield has been decisive in the past against Rangers. On a night of heavy and freezing rainfall that kept the crowd down to just 54,000, Celtic lined up Hunter, McGrain, Brogan, Murray, McNeil, McCluskey, Hood, Hay, Wilson, Callahan, Dalgleish, Subs, Connolly, Johnston. While Harry Hood would take the plaudits with his glorious hat trick, Celtic's best player on the night was Paul Wilson. The League Cup at this time was operating the offside experiment that saw the 18-yard lines extended to the touchline and Wilson was played at centre-forward where he stayed high up the pitch with orders to use his exceptional pace to run the legs off the Rangers' defence, which he did to perfection. Celtic had the win behind them in the first half, which was evenly contested. Hood opened the scoring on 34 minutes when Peter McCloy dived to clear a low cross from Kenny Dalgleish. The ball spun towards goal and was cleared back to Dalglish again and he crossed back in for Hood to head over the grounded keeper. It took only three minutes for Rangers to equalise, Alex MacDonald curling a spectacular long-range effort over Ali Hunter and into the top corner. As the teams swapped over, Rangers seemed to have the advantage with the wind behind them in the second half. That's when Davy Hay and Steve Murray took control of the midfield. Ian Archer wrote in the Glasgow Herald on the 5th of December 1973, The expected never happened as Celtic locked up the middle, tackled even harder and eventually sucked their opponents dry. They retook the lead on 55 minutes when a free kick from Tom Callahan to the far post was headed down by Billy McNeil for Hood to slam home. Archer wrote, this time, there was no reply, for Hayes' damaging tackles had taken effect and Rangers were short of inventive ideas. Rangers sent on Derek Johnston as an extra striker in place of Tommy McLean, but Hood then netted his hat-trick, clipping the ball over the onrushing McCloy with his left foot after a superb pass from Dalgleish. There may have been a hint of offside about the third, but a minute later, Hood had a fourth goal disallowed, Hugh Taylor writing in the Daily Record, he was obviously at least two yards onside. The soaked but jubilant Celtic fans sang singing in the rain throughout that dominant second half as a third victory of the season was recorded over Rangers. Celtic had reached their 10th successive League Cup final, but they hadn't won it since 1969 and they would lose the final 10 days later to a Dundee side captained by Tommy Gemmell. But it was Harry Hood's night joining a select band of players to score a hat-trick for Celtic against an Ibrox club. It would be more than 40 years before that was matched by Moussa Dembele in 2016.